this is not racism this is just normal it's life you deal with it in the uk they love to scream equality and diversity we have to work twice as hard to get even half the level of opportunities that our non-black counterparts get hi guys it's jan here and just really quickly i am putting this video on instagram on facebook and on youtube as well and if you are watching on youtube i just want to apologize real quick because i know i promised you guys a different video as my next video however we do have a very pressing issue at hand as i'm sure you've seen it blow up uh, all across social media this week with the hashtag black lives matter um the issue is racism that is it we're not going to sugarcoat this because that's what the issue is and quite frankly it's not a new issue at all because clearly it is something that we've read about in history something that has happened that has been happening um, but it's just sad that in 2020 it's still happening but one thing i'm happy about is that now it is being brought to light i would just like to use my voice to shed a bit more light on areas that i feel like are not talked about enough i'm not going to talk too tough about what's happening in america because we are all aware of those injustices we are all aware why black people are angry and tired and fed up of a system that continues to show us that our lives mean nothing we get murdered and our murderers are left to walk free already the color of our skin is a death sentence some people get angry some people want to burn things down personally for me i just get upset i get really upset and i don't want to start crying for you guys on camera that's why i'm not going to talk about what's happening in america at the moment but we want justice for george floyd for brianna taylor for the endless list of others who deserve it and here in the UK, we want justice for Belly Majinga. If you haven't heard what happened to her, please do Google her name, Belly Majinga, um, and look into that. But what I really want to focus on is the racism that happens in the UK, because that is an area which I feel like not enough light is shed upon. So I'm going to use my voice right now to speak up about it because it needs to be done. And also, I only like to talk about things that I'm well versed on. Do you get it? And these are experiences that I have lived through myself and things that I have seen happening around me now racism in the uk i feel as though is very overlooked we are made to believe that it's not really a thing it's not real it doesn't happen because we don't have police officers um you know going around shooting black people because of the color of their skin that racism is not a thing here first of all wrong and i feel like because of that misconception a lot of the time our voices get silenced we're made to believe that you know we're overreacting in situations and we're making a big deal out of nothing no you see in the uk they love to scream equality and diversity and employers will be like oh look i have this percentage of people of color as my employees see <laughs> we're not a racist company but did you guys know that there was a study that was done where a model CV was used and all that was changed on it was the name. So they put some white sounding names on one version of the CV and some African sounding names on another version of the same CV and sent it out to employers. Now tell me, which CV do you think got the most job offers? Yeah. That's right. If racism doesn't exist in the UK, please tell me why, as African people, we have to whitewash our names in order to have a better chance at getting a good paid job. Please tell me why, as African people, we have to whitewash our names in order to avoid being bullied in school. Yes, I've been there. I know some of you watching this have been there too. Why should the things that make us uniquely African be a barrier to our opportunities? Because of my name, I can't get a job. What do you call that? You know, aside from the names, yeah. Let's talk about how racism is deeply ingrained in so many aspects of the system. The social justice system, the education system, the healthcare system, the media. Let's tap into that. Starting with the social justice system, yeah? Tell me why black boys are, guys, get this number, yeah? 40 times more likely to be stopped and searched by the police than their white counterparts. Are you guys hearing that? 40 times. 
if that's not outrageous to you then i don't know what is as if that's not enough maybe we should talk about why it is that black people make up three percent of the uk population but when you go to the jails and the prisons black and brown people are making up up to 50 percent of the population there why Tell me why in the past few years the number of black young offenders has risen by about 50% whilst the number of white young offenders has fallen by about 70%. We are criminalised and we are marginalised unproportionately. Let's talk about the education system, yeah? Now this one hits home because in schools, the only black history we get taught, literally the only black history we get told is about slavery there is so much more to black history we have such a rich history and i had to learn those things from other black organizations that weren't my school so why is it that the education system does this why do we want to condition the minds of young black people to think that oppression is all our history is about and oppression is where we belong? Why don't we talk about pre-colonial Africa and how great we were doing before the West came and disorganised our systems? Why don't we get taught about what continues to happen? The way our natural resources are still being stolen, but that is being covered up as civil wars. Why do you think Congo can never find peace? You know, I'm not going to talk about that too tough because there's so much to be said. Another thing I want to say about the education system is careers. Now, our young black people, just like anyone else, have goals and dreams of being things let me talk about this through my own story so when i was doing my a levels um my grades were great and i had applied to study medicine <laughs> now my head of year and careers officer actually told me the same thing but my head of year who knew me on a slightly uh deeper level she calls me up to her office and she's like jan i understand that you're intending to apply to four medical schools you know what <laughs> just a word of advice i don't think you should do that i think you should consider different career options because it's highly unlikely that you're going to be accepted so to avoid that disappointment i think you should look elsewhere look at me now but look at me now I'm laughing at it now, but I didn't deep it at the time. At the time, a 16-year-old is conditioned to believe that they are not good enough for their goals and their dreams. They are not good enough to follow what they believe is their purpose and their calling. Do you know what that would have? Do you know what that would have meant if I, at my tender age of 16, where I barely know what is good for me in life and what is not, if I had listened to that woman's advice, I would not be about to be a doctor in two years' time. Now this is not a story that applies to just me, this is the daily struggle of black students in schools. They are constantly made to feel like they are not good enough to do what they want to do. They are given lower predicted grades and they are not pushed or encouraged to do well. Why? Because this system is not for us. So a word of advice to any black student, young person watching this right now, okay, you're gonna hear these things, they're gonna tell you you're not good enough, they're gonna wanna keep you within a certain box in confinement, they don't wanna see us doing good, but <laughs> hear them, block them out and work hard. One thing that I was always told growing up, and I'm sure it's not an alien concept um, to a lot of black people watching this right now, is that we have to work twice as hard to get even half the level of opportunities that our white counterparts or non-black counterparts get even half it's the sad reality of it but we have to grind we have to hustle to make it but even after we've made it it's sad i read a tweet this week that said rich black people identify more with being rich than they do with being black and i've seen that from my own eyes and quite frankly it's sad so please when you make it in life please never forget where you have done came from help your people get there too
opportunities are already scarce we need to help each other let's talk about the healthcare system this one yeah if racism is not a thing i want to know why a person of african descent in the uk is four times more likely to die from covid than a person who is not of african descent if it was following the premise that africans are more susceptible to this disease because of our genetics then could you tell me why in africa where the virus has reached as well the continent actually has the lowest amount of global deaths if we were more susceptible to it our people on the continent would be dropping like flies because that's where we all are but why is it here where we have the better healthcare system where we have the better resources that more of our people are dying why What's going on there? There's clearly something we're missing. Or maybe it's the same reason why black women are five times more likely to die in childbirth. Apparently, because of the colour of our skin, we are perceived to be able to endure more pain. So we're not given enough pain relief and we're dismissed more. If I have any medical peers, colleagues watching this, please, please, please spread the message. If you have a black patient and they tell you they're in pain, please believe them. Please give them medication. Please give them your attention. Please. If there's a language barrier, if you can't understand what they're saying, maybe their English isn't great, please get an interpreter, their family members, somebody who can help. Now on the doctor's side, let's talk about why for every one pound that a black female doctor earns, a white female doctor earns one pound nineteen and a white male doctor earns one pound thirty-eight. Let's put the healthcare system to one side, let's talk about the media. When will you ever see a headline portraying a black person in a positive light? When? Let me know, I'll be waiting. Because we have seen how the media have literally bullied Meghan Markle out of Buckingham Palace. We have seen the times when Meghan Markle has been in the same situation as Kate, is that her name? Middleton? Yeah. And the difference in the headline on the exact same situation. We've seen it. We've seen it. So what I'm trying to say is that society through so many different systems perpetuates racism but covers it up to make it seem like this is not racism this is just normal it's life you deal with it and you know as that people were strong because we have dealt with so much silently but we won't be silent no more enough is enough and you know what because this is such a chronic problem it's not something we can just talk about and it's gonna go away no it needs long-term medication long-term solutions what does that mean we need to start educating ourselves on the injustices that are happening around us sorry to use this cliche term but we need to stay woke it's very easy for these things to happen around us and we are not even aware so that's what this video is about i just wanted to shed some light on some of these issues where a lot of people say that racism in the uk is not real it is real it's just hardly noticeable if you don't make yourself aware of these issues that happen on a daily so yeah what i really do want to close on right now is a slightly more positive point like we get it we're going through a very hard time we're struggling but what we can do is be there for each other this is not a time for us to start picking out our differences it doesn't matter if i'm jamaican nigerian ugandan whatever that is irrelevant right now what we have in common is the color of our skin and what that means for us is that we have one common enemy that is the system so we need to come together in order to dismantle these systems these structures that are set in place against us how can we do that well every voice matters if we have if if there is a crowd of people and there is not one person saying a thing that crowd is voiceless but each of us needs to use our individual voices your voice could in inspire your neighbor to also say something like i said as well it's a chronic problem it's not gonna go away 
but we can start making differences that can make a change a drop in the ocean how about we start by supporting each other how about instead of putting our money into establishments that are built upon systematic racism the very banks that we put our money in when we walk in they look at us like we're about to rob the place how about we start putting our money into our own people instead of into organizations and systems that have shown us time and time again that we are less than now this video was less so supposed to be about solutions and more about shedding light raising awareness about the issues that um us as black people do face here in the uk and our voices need to be heard we will not be silenced anymore enough is enough okay enough is enough if you're looking for solutions, I recommend watching Missy T's most recent YouTube video. It's titled Solutions. Also, if you're not black and you're looking to help, or even if you are black, um, there's a link in my bio or in the description of this video, which is going to be um, showing you different petitions you can sign. Please sign all of them. There's also organisations you can donate to, um, black businesses you can support as well. Let's support each other, let's uplift each other. We really need each other in this time right now that we're going through, it's hard, it's tough, we are in pain and we are grieving. So let's be there for each other right now. And don't forget to put all your troubles and all your worries in prayer as well. God is always listening and he will hear us. Let's pray for change and let's start being the change that we wanna see as well. Thank you for listening and I hope you have taken something from the masses of things that I've said today. Thank you.